Guten Abend, meine Leute. Hallihallo und herzlich willkommen zu diesem Gemeinschaftsprojekt von mir und meiner Frau. Das kommt auf beiden Kanälen. Und zwar heute Fallout 76 aus dem Vault. Der neue Artikel ist nun mal draußen. Seit gestern, also wir nehmen das Video heute am 6. November auf 2020. Und weil wir es gestern leider nicht mehr geschafft haben. Ja, unser Sohn musste ja raus, ne, wegen Schule und ich musste ja zur Arbeit, ist nun mal ein bisschen blöd, wenn man dann früh aufstehen muss, oder Schatz? Genau. So, aber nun mal zu dem aus dem Wort Artikel heute, stehlende Dämmerung, Entwicklervideo, haben wir heute im Petto. Und natürlich noch die November Events. So, und wir fangen natürlich an erstmal mit den November Events, weil das Punktstück heben wir uns natürlich wieder zum Schluss auf. So, hier haben wir denn mal ja, einen, einen frühen Blick auf die stehlende Dämmerung Quest. Ja, das wird dann hier jetzt in dem Video, was ja hier unten nachher kommt, ausführlicher erklärt. Zwar wieder mal auf Englisch, also Leute, die nicht so gut Englisch können. Einfach eingucken und versuchen, so viel wie möglich mitzubekommen. Alle anderen, hört euch das an. Sehr interessant. Aber jetzt kommen wir erstmal zu den Events im November. Zum einen ist jetzt erstmal dieses Wochenende wieder Schatzsuche aktiv. Und zwar Beginn. Gästen, 5. November um 18 Uhr mitteleuropäischer Zeit. Ihr könnt wieder die Schatzsucher Grubenhauer finden. Wie die sich anhört, kennt ihr ja mittlerweile schon. Und dann könnt ihr wieder Grubenhauer Kübel jagen bis zum Gegend mehr. Ich habe jetzt auch schon zwei, aber die habe ich noch nicht geöffnet. Und da kommen wir dann auch noch mal in einem separaten Video hinzu, was da nachher drin ist, wenn das Schatzsucher Event wieder vorbei ist. Das endet nämlich am 9. November, also Montag um 18 Uhr, mitteleuropäische Zeit. Also freut euch schon mal drauf. Wieder jede Menge Loot. Und viel Spaß schon mal dabei. Ich wünsche euch auf jeden Fall dafür auch schon mal viel Glück. So, was kommt denn noch? Events zum zweijährigen Jubiläum. Ja, im November vor zwei Jahren, also November 2020, 2018 kam ja Fallout 76 offiziell raus. Davor gab es ja noch eine Beta, eine Closed Beta, nur für Vorbesteller. Ja, war schon sehr interessant. Aber jetzt kommen wir halt zu nächste Woche mit uns das zweijährige Fallout 76. Also das zweijährige Jubiläum. Also Zwei Jahre, mal gucken, wie schön die dort feiern, was es da für schöne Events geben wird. Also Rangbelohnung und legendäre Ausrüstung zu bereichern. Ja, das klingt doch schon mal nicht schlecht. Und beginnen wird das am 10. November, das wäre jetzt also kommenden Dienstag. Und endet dann am 17. November, den darauffolgenden Dienstag. Fängt an um 18 Uhr und endet dann auch wieder um 18 Uhr. Also freut euch schon mal, das wird auf jeden Fall eine spannende Woche. Äh ja, hast du noch was dazu zu sagen? Ja, Schatz ist gerade im Fallout 76 drin und ist beim Flughafen und tötet da schon wieder die verbraten Hühner. Ja, und zwar reichlich. So, dann wird es natürlich auch wieder vom 12., also nächst, diesen Donnerstag, der jetzt kommt, 18 Uhr bis Montag, äh, auch wieder 18 Uhr, den 16. November, wieder 25% auf drei Sterne legendäre Items bei der legendären Händlerin geben. Also, wer dann mal wieder ein Schnäppchen abgreifen will, greift da natürlich wieder zu. Ja, könnt mir dann ja auch mal unten in die Kommentare schreiben, genauso wie bei meiner Frau. Ähm, was ihr so rausbekommen habt, dann würden und würde uns auf jeden Fall mal interessieren. 
Oder was meinst du? So, und ich würde mal sagen, das war es dann auch schon wieder. Weil der Rest... So, kommt dann andermal zu. So, und nun wechseln wir allerdings zum Video. Bist du schon gespannt, mein Schatz? Ja. Dann wollen wir mal. Hi everyone, welcome to another Fallout 76 dev dive. This time we're going to be taking a closer look at Steel Dawn Quest coming with our patch in December. I'm Nate Valenta with the community team and I'm here with some of the designers from the Fallout 76 team, Mark and Brianna. How are you both doing today? Doing great. Uh, excited to finally get to talk about this stuff. I think we've got uh, some fantastic content lined up along with other features in this update that's coming coming out in uh, December. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just really stoked to be talking about it now. Brianna, how are you doing? I'm doing really well. I'm looking forward to uh, sharing the Steel Dawn content with the community and uh, seeing what kinds of choices people make as they adventure with the Brotherhood. How about you guys tell us a little bit more about um, what you do on the Fallout 76 team and um, what you've done specifically with some of the Steel Dawn quests? Well, I'm the design director on Fallout 76, uh, so that means I oversee all aspects of design, uh, everything that we're putting into the game. I did contribute well, some to the high-level story arc. Uh, however, the majority of the work uh, was done by our outstanding uh, quest design team, uh, led by Brianna. I'm the lead quest designer on Fallout 76, and I help the team plan our story, hold with our characters, and implement our quests. Like I mentioned before, the Steel Dawn quests are coming in December, and that's going to be a free update for Fallout 76, as all of our updates are and will be. Um, how much quest content is this going to include? How much of the story for the Brotherhood of Steel are we going to see? Yeah, so we have a completely dedicated quest line uh, to the Brotherhood of Steel. Uh, it's the first half of an overarching story that will complete next year. So this is effectively Act 1 of a two-act play. Uh, you know, when you compare it to our previous, uh, you know, update expansion of Wastelanders, uh, you know, this is not going to have the amount of content that Wastelanders had. Uh, however, we feel really good about the quality of the content. It's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, I would compare it uh, oh, to kann man one of the best schon lines rein, for the factions in Wastelanders. So it's kind of the, the comparable amount of content we have here. Uh, but again, this is just the first half, and we're going to expand on it next year. As many of you at home watching know, we released a recruitment trailer for the Steel Dawn update last week on Friday, October 23rd. So if you haven't checked that out, please go give it a watch. Um, for you, Mark and Brianna, why are we looking to the Brotherhood of Steel now, as opposed to another faction or maybe a, an existing faction in the game? Ooh, uh, nice. Well, I think a lot of it boils okay, down okay. to when you think about well, Fallout, so what's the first faction that comes to mind? Können, and and for a lot of people, geil, that is the Brotherhood of Steel. They, it is they, for me, yeah. Yeah, and so, you know, we had uh, some great content that was Brotherhood of Steel related when the game launched, uh, the, the whole story arc. Uh, with Taggarty's Thunder. It's sort of the quintessential faction that everybody thinks about with Fallout, and we want to do more there. The other thing that trailer didn't really have much on, it didn't touch on, is the characters. Who are some of the folks we're going to meet as we play through the Steel Dawn questline? So in the artwork, you saw uh, Paladin Romani, who's going to be the leader of the expeditionary group uh, on their way to so Appalachia, about... and her second-in-command, Knight Shin. Accompanying them is also Scribe Valdez, who's going to catalog and research the technology that they run into mm, as they uh, journey through Appalachia. Uh, along the way, they've also met some initiates that they've recruited, and they're, uh, they're going to meet up with Russell Dorsey, who you might know from our Fortifying Atlas event earlier this summer. So it, it sounds like, you know, this isn't the, a big Brotherhood army coming in to save the day. It sounds like a, a smaller group. Would, would well, you say that's right? That's right. It was a small group of uh, five Brotherhood officers who left California. Uh, not all of them made it to Appalachia, but they have a very specific mission in mind and they want to establish themselves and a new chapter in Appalachia. Are you able to tell me a little bit more about that mission? Because I think one of the things we've been seeing a lot of, um, you know, in the community is speculation mm -hmm. about, hey, are the, are the Brotherhood going to come in here and be good guys? Are they going to be enemies? Like, what should we expect from them? But the Brotherhood of Steel is a group that people have always had a variety of different reactions to, and that's the same for people of Appalachia. 
Um, some of the people that the Brotherhood will come into contact with will find them potential allies. Some will want to see them as enemies, and yet others aren't quite sure what to make of them. We know that the Brotherhood of Steel is is coming here looking to preserve some sort of technology. Is there anything more you can say about that? The Brotherhood of Steel has a mission to check out uh, the remains of the Atlas Observatory, which they're going to turn into their base, which was home to a top secret government project before the war. And there's more there that you're going to help them discover in the course of the quests. What kind of technology is the Brotherhood of Steel bringing that we as players will be able to get our hands on? Well, you're definitely going to get your hands on some good tech. Uh, we've got several new weapons, a full suit of armor, as well as some cool stuff for your camp lined up uh, as part of the, the quest rewards uh, for yeah, this first act. Vierfach, wenn ich das the sehe. weapon that uh, I'm super excited about shot. is the uh, Hellstorm uh, Launcher. Uh, it's uh, got a full suite of mods. Vierfach. You can even mod it for different types of elemental damage. Mm. Uh, it really stands apart from other missile launches in our game. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of fun to shoot. I'll leave it at that. And on top of that, like if you want to build your camp, to be a Brotherhood of Steel base, the centerpiece oh, that you're nice going to want is the new mm. awesome ah, round table die, that you're going to get after aus. completing the first quest. We also ich have a great new melee stimmig. weapon. It's the plasma cutter. Our melee players are really going to appreciate having this new weapon das in the game. It looks Schneider. cool. It plays well. Das a new schwer. pistol that's going to be rewarded as part of daily ops. So not just quest content, but other other ways to get some of these cool new items too. Awesome. Yeah, I know on the PTS, some folks have been really enjoying the plasma cutter in particular um, and how you can mod it and things like that. So really looking forward to those. Um, so while we're heading through some of these quests, you know, I know something we like to do is because we have such a big game and so many great places to go and more. see, we like to revisit a lot of those locations mm, uh, and, and redress sure? them for the new quests. Um, are there any places we revisited or any new locations that the Steel Dawn quest line is going to take us to? Yeah, uh, we're definitely doing a bit of both. We're, we're going to revisit old locations, and we've got some new ones lined up too. One that pops up in my head that is uh, very memorable and creepy, and you're going to want to know a lot more about, is the Enclave Research Facility. They were having to deal with a lot of the things that were happening in the world above them, uh, just like everybody else in the wasteland, and they're trying to figure things out. You're going to see some really rare scorched uh, creatures. For example, there is a scorched Just Mothman that you're going to uh, encounter hey, along the way, and that is one of the most rare spawns in the game right now. So this is a great way for you to see what a scorched Mothman looks like for all you cultists out there. <laughs> awesome. That is great news for the cult of the Mothman. Brianna, did you have any favorite locations or any new locations that stood out to you? One of the great things about working with the level design team is that we get to Nine, visit older locations, see them updated for the story, uh, and work with them to create new locations. Ach, yeah, so ja you'll be visiting some newer okay. sub-areas in Foundation and in the Crater, and you'll have a chance Foundation to see a treehouse village that's had a new group of people move into it and get a chance okay. to know them and uh, see what kind of community they are. So who are we chatting with here? Who's Jenny? What can you tell us about her? Jenny's the matriarch of the retreat, and she and her people have settled here for their own safety and to set themselves up as traders. Um, what you'll find, you know, talking to people at the retreat is that they're very close-knit, um, they're very supportive of each other, and they really do function like a family. Let's talk about enemies for a second. Does uh, the Steel Dawn questline introduce any new enemies or major antagonists that we can look forward to meeting? So, of course, when the Brotherhood arrives in Appalachia, they're not going to be welcomed by everybody there. You're going to come into conflict with a group of Blood Eagles who are led by um, a ruthless, uh, intelligent woman named Dagger. And you're going to find yourself involved in one of the conflicts that she's involved in. And uh, as you go along, you're going to learn more about the history of this group of the Brotherhood and uh, some conflicts that they have within as well. Earlier, you mentioned that we're going to a new Enclave-themed location. Um, how are factions playing a role in Steel Dawn other than Brotherhood of Steel? Uh, one of the things about the Brotherhood moving into Appalachia is going to be that the existing groups are curious about who you are and what you want. So if you sided with either the Settlers or the Raiders in the Wastelanders quest line, you'll be mm -hmm. able to talk a little bit from that experience and provide that faction's point of view. There are a couple of quests where you're going to be dealing with them directly, and so you're you'll have an opportunity to bring in some of the past things that you've done as a player. So we've talked a lot about 
you know, the new quests, some of the new locations, weapons, armor, all coming with the Sealed Dawn update. You know, we've covered shelters pretty extensively. Um, what else is coming with this update that players can look forward to? So as part of Steel Dawn, we're adding two new allies that you can add to your camp. Um, they're what the team calls light allies. They're characters that you can meet and talk with about their own stories and uh, their experiences also, in the wasteland. One of them is Solomon Hardy, who's a Brotherhood of Steel member and a medic. And the other is Yasmin Chowdhury, who is a chef. And in addition to hanging at your camp and talking with you, you'll be able to ask Solomon to heal your wounds, rads, or diseases. Oh. And Yasmin will cook a meal for you once a day when you're hungry. Uh, these two new allies are part of our season three rewards. So uh, you'll unlock them as you progress through the scoreboard. We've definitely never had anything as extensive as allies on that scoreboard. So that's gonna be pretty exciting. So I know the team has spent a lot of time developing the Steel Dawn quest line. Um, it's been your lives at work for a little while here. Uh, what are some interesting tidbits from the development of Steel the Dawn that you guys would like to share from. with the people at home? You know, we first started talking about the early, you know, the, the overarching story even last year. Uh, so we've, you know, we've been thinking about this and working on it for quite some time and it's gone through tremendous iteration. I'm just thinking like we write entire backstories like we have we have pages that describe the backstories of, of our characters and who they are and where they come from and for example daniel shen is the uh the son of a, a principal and he's you know he's from the west coast and you know he, he grew up the only <laughs> son of a principal in a very structured home you know and, and when you meet daniel in the game uh, you'll see that um so there's just a lot of those kinds of things that there's so so much more detail uh that we have to think about in order just to capture who these people are and make sure we're consistent with who they are and, and how the, how they portray how how they're portrayed and and the dialogue choices that you're going to have with them. Brianna, how about you? Do you have any um, exciting or fun stories from development on Steel Dawn or, or since you've joined the team? Sure. So one of my favorite things was getting to know who the characters are that we created. Um, like Mark said, we have deep backstories for each of these people, but it's not just the Brotherhood characters. We've got a group of people you're going to meet in the retreat who have individual and a group backstory of their own. And um, they've got a strong charismatic leader who rescued people, brought them together, and helped them make their way through the wasteland. Um, in another quest, you're going to meet a family who, in the middle of fighting off a ghoul attack, has sibling rivalry. And they have some of the same moments that you, you might have in your own family growing up. Um, it's just a tremendous variety of people that populate the wasteland, and we hope that in you know, working with the Brotherhood and in traveling through it, that uh, we've done justice to them in the process of bringing them to life. Elaborating a little bit on that, you know, we tend to approach things as a writer's room where we get together uh, as a group and discuss uh, the characters and the plot lines together, and we get a lot of input and feedback. But at the end of the day, each character is owned by a particular quest designer. So we get that consistency of the character and that also helps shape uh, the characters and the content. That's so awesome. You know, I, I remember before we transitioned to, um, you know, working remotely here, you know, there would be design meetings that would pour out of a conference room as uh, I'm waiting to go into one and just wanting to be a fly on the wall for some of those conversations you, you all are having uh, while you work on those storylines and characters and things like that. I think that would be really cool. Well, that just about does it for our Steel Dawn Dev Dive. Mark, Brianna, I wanted to say thank you so much for taking time out of your busy, busy schedules to walk us through some of the quests and give us little details and tidbits from development. Uh, really appreciate you guys coming on. Not a problem at all. I really enjoy getting to do these. Uh, I'm excited to finally get to talk about this stuff. Uh, and show off our hard work. Uh, I think we've got a really cool quest line uh, coming with Steel Dawn. And again, this is the first part. So we have a whole nother act coming next year. On top of that, we have to remember Shelters is also coming out in this update. So it's a really cool update and uh, really looking forward to getting it out there. Thank you for the chance to let us share some of what we've been working on uh, with Steel Dawn. And we look forward to seeing you in the wasteland. To those of you at home, thank you so much for tuning in to our Steel Dawn Dev Dive. We can't wait to get this quest line into your hands with our Steel Dawn update in December. Like Mark mentioned, that's also going to include shelters and a bunch of other improvements and bug fixes for Fallout 76. So look forward to that. Be sure to keep an eye on fallout.com over the coming weeks for more information about the patch. 
It will be free to download and play as all of our updates are. And if you own a copy of Fallout 76 on PC through Bethesda.net, you can jump into the public test server right now to try out the Steel Dawn questline, shelters, and everything else that's coming with our Steel Dawn update. Until next time, we'll see you in Appalachia. Okay, liebe Leute. Also, was haben wir jetzt in diesem Video noch festgestellt? Nein, das hat man tatsächlich mitbekommen, weil ich ja alleine nur Headset auf hatte, weil mein Englisch ist ja nun mal klein wenig besser. Und da haben sie jetzt so im letzten Teil noch gesagt, es kommen neue Waffen, neue Rüstung, neue Quests, neue Background Quests. Na klar, äh, stelle eine Bruderschaft, da wird es auf jeden Fall eine neue Background Quest geben. Und wenn ich das so richtig verstanden habe... Wieder mal äh, äh, gratis Download, free, free Download haben sie gesagt. Meinen sie damit jetzt das Spiel wieder gratis für eine Woche oder so wie lange? Weiß ich nicht. Das muss ich mir nochmal genau anhören. Aber er klingt auf jeden Fall schon mal sehr interessant. Worauf freust du dich denn am meisten, mein Schatz? Ich? Ja. Auf die schöne Karte. Du meinst das neue Spielbrett? Mhm. Ja, okay, das Spielbrett ist ja das eine, aber darum geht es ja nicht. Äh, freust du dich alleine schon mal auf die Stelle in der Bruderschaft? Okay. Dass es eine neue Quest gibt, neue Campbegleiter, neue Waffen, neue Rüstung. Ja. Also ich habe zwar immer noch nicht alle Waffenmods und äh, äh, alle Baupläne dafür, habt ihr ja auch in dem anderen Video gesehen, werde ich auch noch mal verlinken, um in der Infobox. Ähm, aber ich habe schon einige und jetzt kommen wieder neue dazu. Wann soll man die denn noch alle sich organisieren? Gar so. nicht. Ey, du hast ja jetzt schon wenn du jede Modifikation für eine Waffe noch mit dazu zählst als eigenständige Waffe, weil im Grunde genommen, du baust dir die Standardwaffe und dann kannst du dir in zig verschiedenen Arten modifizieren, dann hast du ja schon über 1000 Waffen in dem Spiel. Und jetzt kommen neue dazu? Ja, das wird ja ein echt heftiger Scheiß. Also ich freue mich auf jeden Fall schon mal drauf. Du ja auch. Sag mir was. Hm? Vielleicht sagt man jetzt im Video auf dem Video. Ja, in diesem Fall. Ich bin auf jeden Fall gehypt. Du sagst, wunderschön. Ja, hast ja recht. Hm. Ich bin auf jeden Fall hammer gehypt. Ich freue mich. Und jetzt ist mein Schatz dran mit dem ihren Abschlussworten, worauf sie sich am meisten freut und was sie euch auf dem Weg wünscht? Ich. Ja. Also die Karte eigentlich. Bruderschaft. Dass mit viele, viele Leute immer mehr reinkommen. Das Spiel ist wunder, wunderschön. Also ich spiele nur noch für das. Ein Fall, äh, Fortnite, das ab, abgesagt. Ja, geht ja, da hast du auch nur diese paar Waffen da und ein paar Autos hast du, toll. Hast immer nur dieselbe Karte und äh, Fallout hat ja eben in der kurzen Zeit, seitdem es existiert, schon dreimal so viel Content drin, wie äh, GTA jemals haben könnte. Aber das ist eine andere Sache, darüber wollen wir uns jetzt nicht streiten. Ich wünsche euch auf jeden Fall viel Spaß, immer guten Loot, macht nicht so viel Blödsinn, seid immer nett zu euren Leuten. Und schließt euch uns an, der Fallout Family kommt auf unseren Discord, unten in der Videobeschreibung verlinkt. Wir freuen uns drauf. So, noch mal mal einen Fallout-Kanal auf. Ja, so einen äh, eigenen Channel über die Fallout Family. Wo es nur darum geht, wo ihr dann Probleme reinschreiben könnt. Wenn ihr was Neues hört, könnt ihr es da mit allen Leuten teilen. Leute fragen, ob die mit euch mitspielen wollen. 
Freut euch schon mal drauf. Kommt mit dazu, schließt euch der Fallout Family an und erlebt Appalachia so wie noch nie zuvor. Genau. Bis dann. Ich bin immer raus. Ciao. Bye bye.